oxygen during inhalation we take in air and during exhalation we breathe out air so this process of inhalation and exhalation together is known as respiration so during inhalation we take in air from that air we take in oxygen then during exhalation we breathe out air the major part of the air will be carbon dioxide so this process of inhalation and exhalation together is called as respiration so breathing is a part of the process called respiration so we breathe in oxygen we breathe out carbon dioxide in this process so everybody is alert of this right respiration process so process of breathing is similar in animals as well as human beings so as human beings will take respiration process same way animals also take in air and breathe out air so what is the need for respiration through respiration body finally obtains energy from the food taken whatever food we eat the energy from that food is absorbed in the body through a process called respiration the food whatever you have taken will be absorbed by the body through a process called respiration so that is the need for respiration so atoms see human beings and plants all of them breathe through their nose but some animals have specialized breathing like earthworm earthworm breathes through its skin because it doesn't have any specialized mouth parts same way fishes breathe through their gills gills are attached on either sides of the body of the fish that help in breathing so in the water fishes use dissolved oxygen the dissolved oxygen air is present in the water through which fish take that dissolved oxygen and breathe so that is how animals breathe then plants plants breathe through their leaves on the leaves there are tiny tiny holes or pores called stomata so these tiny holes or pores help the leaves to breathe in the exchange of gases so exchange of gases occur through the leaves in the tiny pore like structures called stomata so in the day time during when there is sunlight photosynthetic activity will be going on the plant prepares the food so during the day time in sunlight plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen but during after sunset during the night time plants take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide so it is different during the day during the night even though during the night plants take in oxygen they do not take much oxygen they take very little amount of oxygen so that is how plants also breathe then do all living things respond to stimuli what is stimulus changes in our surroundings make us respond to them known as stimulus so if any changes happening in our surroundings we respond to that change that is known as the stimulus so suppose if we are walking barefoot without slippers then if we put our leg on a thorn immediately pricks us right then we remove our leg back and suppose if we have touch a very hot object immediately we remove our hand back same way if we touch ice we cannot hold ice for long time we take our hand back if we see a sharp light we immediately close our eyes all these are our response to the stimulus so human beings respond to sharp object sharp light heat and cold so that is how human beings respond to stimulus then animals animals also respond to stimulus how usually in our kitchens or in other places we see cockroaches during the night time so cockroaches come out only during the night times if we switch on the light cockroaches will run away so cockroaches respond to light same way animals wild animals white animals also if you have bright light is flashed at them or if fire is flashed at them they run away that way wild animals respond to light then birds birds have a very good eyesight they can see sideways also so if you go near a bird immediately the bird will fly away because it thinks that we may harm it so birds fly away when we go near them so this is how animals and human beings respond to this 
is how animals and human beings respond to stimuli. Then coming to plants, plants also respond to stimuli. During the night times, flowers grow and flowers open up, and during the evenings, flowers again close. So that is how plants res plants respond to stimuli. Then there is a plant called mimosa or touch me not plant, also known as chewing me cup char. So that plant that leaves, whenever we touch the leaves, the leaves shrink or close. So that touch me not plant also responds to the touch. If we touch the plant, immediately the leaves close. The mimosa or the chewing gum or the touch me not plant responds to touch, responds to the stimuli. Whenever we touch the leaves of the plant, they automatically close. And whenever, after some time, they open up by themselves. So that is how plants also respond to stimuli. So we can say that all the living beings respond to stimuli. Next, living organisms and excretion. Does all the living organisms excrete? Yes. Animals excrete both solid and liquid wastes, urine as well as the stools. So, usually what is waste? The food we eat for our body, some part will be absorbed and utilized by the body. And the non-useful part will go as the undigested part. So, this undigested part will be removed as the waste from the body. So, undigested food is removed as the waste from the body. So, the process of getting rid of these wastes by the living organisms is known as excretion. The process of removal of this undigested food waste is known as excretion. So, how do plants remove their waste? In the form of secretions. If you see a neem tree or a baboon tree, you see some sort of gum being secreted on the barks of the tree on the outer surfaces. So, this type of gum which is secreted on the barks of the tree is nothing but the plant excretion. Plant excretion. So, that secretion which plant secretes in the form of gum is nothing but the excretory product of the plant. It has many medicinal uses also that gum. Then excretion is a feature common to all the living human beings. Living beings. So all the animals excrete, plants excrete. Not all the plants excrete. Some plants store their waste material in the body only. Some plants excrete their waste material in the form of that gum. That secretion is the waste material. And human beings also excrete both solid substances as well as in the liquid urine and the stools. So we can say that excretion is a common feature for all the living beings. All the living beings excrete. Then do all the living beings respond? Do all the living beings reproduce their own kind? Reproduction is nothing but producing their young ones, giving birth to, the, to their young ones. So how do living beings reproduce? Say for example animals. Some animals give birth to young ones directly, that is small kind, small animals. Some animals give eggs. Later that eggs hatch and become base animal. Suppose for example crocodile, turtle and then you have uh, hens, you have ducks, you have quails. All these gives eggs. Later those eggs hatch and become a new, new animal. There are some animals directly give birth to their young ones like goat, then you have cow, you have elephant, you have kangaroo. These animals give birth directly to their young ones. So that is how animals reproduce. Then coming to the plants. Some plants reproduce in the form of seeds. Only when the seeds we plant in the soil they germinate and become new plants. That is how plants reproduce. But some plants, not only from their seeds, they reproduce from the other parts of the plant also. So, so if you see potatoes, sometimes they are small bud-like structures or eye-like structures on the potato. So these are nothing but the reproductive parts of the potato. So parts of the potato with the bud grows into a new plant. So if you take that potato with the bud and go and plant in the soil, it develops into a new plant. Same way, bryophyllum is a type of plant. So bryophyllum leaves give rise to the new leaves like that. Sometimes if you take the branches of the plant, cut the branches or stems and then plant it into the soil, then also roots develop from that branches and the plant grows. For example, money plant, then you have rose, 
that you have mehendi or henna plant. If you simply take out a branch and plant it in the soil, it grows into a new plant. Like that, not only seeds, many parts of the plant will produce and grow into a new plant. Plants which you produce through cuttings are rose as well as the mehendi plant. Then human beings. Human beings directly give birth to their young ones, right? So that is how all the living, living beings reproduce their own kind. So do all living things move? So plants are living things but they are stationed at one place. They do not move from place to place, the trees. But water, food and then water. But then water, food which is synthesized by the plant that moves from the plant horizontally and vertically. The water, the food, whatever the plants prepare, it moves from the roots to the leaves with the help of certain vessel-like structures called xylem and phloem. So animals move from place to place. They show their body movements. They are not stationed at one place. But plants are anchored to the soil. That is, plants are fixed to the soil. But water, minerals, food made by the plant that travels from roots to the tip of the leaves from parts to parts how with the help of some vessel like structures called xylems and phloems they act like pipes and help in transportation of food and water so living organisms also die whereas living organisms non-living organisms do not die so a type of organism exists only if there is reproduction suppose a certain type of species is dying without reproducing then that species will become extinct no longer that species will exist only if there is reproduction that living organism will continue the species will continue whereas in non-living organisms there is no death nothing so that is the difference between living organism and non-living organism so living organisms have certain features which make them different from the non-living so what are these features they need food they need respiration breathing then they excrete, then they respond to the environment, stimulus is there, then they reproduce, they grow and show movement, whereas non-living things do not show all these, but definitely car, bus, clouds, all these move, but they are not living organisms. So a thing may not have all the characteristics to be called a living thing. So all these things need to be there to call anything as a living thing but in few or few things only one of these quality may be present for example a sack of moong dal in a sack of moong dal those only respiration process will be carried out the seeds will be breathing that's why if you put your hand in a sack of moong dal you will feel warmth heat because the seeds will be breathing in that sack of bag when we go and plant these seeds in soil they will germinate into a new plant so in this sack of seeds only respiration process is going on no excretion no digestion no transport of substances is going on so on a broad basis anything to be called a living thing all these characteristics it should put protein it should possess but there are some extra exceptions some if in a sack a moongal may not have all these things but still it is a living thing that way some things are living things but do not have all these characteristics. So that is how broadly non-living things and living things are classified. Living things show all the life processes, movements, activities. Non-living things do not show all these. So what can we say then? What then is life? Because living thing may not have all the characteristics. Non-living things do not have any of these characteristics. So what then is life? So respiration occurs in these moon dal seeds. Even when respiration occurs in these seeds, even when the other processes are not happening. So, so what then is life? If these all processes are not running in this, then how can we say what is life? There is a lot of diversity or variety in all the organisms living around us. So we cannot definitely say what is life, but we can still conclude that the life is beautiful. So that is how this chapter ends here.